could Joe Biden have screwed up this trip to Europe any more? Um, he doesn't even know basic human decorum, okay? A meeting, and you gotta have some human decorum when you meet the Pope. You hear the panic in the room as he goes in for possibly a kiss or a tete-a-tete, a -tete, head to head, literally? Uh, the Pope is totally freaked out. Nobody knows what to do. This is aberrant behavior at best. It's weird, isn't it? And Joe, we've talked about this with you before, whether it's the Pope, whether it's the wives of cabinet members. I mean, Joe, you just get too close and weird, especially around kids. All right, here he goes with that head routine. Nobody likes it. You got to stop doing it. You've been told before, and you actually promised. You promised you wouldn't do it. But here we are. Social norms have begun to change. They've shifted. And the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility my responsibility and I'll meet it. All right, he's gonna not get into people's faces anymore. That's what he said before when he was running for president. But again, here we are. He has an excuse for why he gets close. Oh yeah, Bo, that horrible thing from 50 years ago. He's just trying to help people. I shake hands, I hug people. I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And, and uh, whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. Did the Pope really need that uh, pick-me-up from Joe Biden? I don't, I don't think so. It's just, and, and here's the part. Remember, he's doing it to help people. And over the years, knowing what I've been through, the things that I've faced, I've found that scores, if not hundreds of people have come up to me and reached out for solace and comfort, something, something, anything that may help them get through the tragedy they're going through. See how he's always bragging about that thing that happened, right? Trying to get maximum use out of it. It gets him out of every jam. It gets him elected. The Pope is not going through something right now, okay? He didn't deserve this. Nobody does. Oh, and I want to, something else about Joe when he gets around the Pope. He just plays these silly tapes that are in his head, little anecdotes that work in Wilmington, but they don't work anywhere else. Here he is trying to say something about a baseball player that I guarantee you the Pope has never heard of. There's a famous African-American baseball player in America. The press walked from the locker room and said his name was Satchel Paige. The commanding guy said, Satch, no one's ever pitched a win at age 47. How do you feel about pitching a win on your birthday? Yeah, not funny, not appropriate, and not relevant. But Joe gets, he says, the seal of approval, even though he's wildly at odds with just about everything the Catholic Church stands for. Mr. President, did the indicator of abortion come up at all? No, it didn't. It came up and just talked about the fact that he was happy that was a good Catholic and keep the Yeah, I just don't believe the, the Pope said that. Joe, I'm happy you're a good Catholic and you should receive communion. I can't imagine anybody being told that Unless Joe asked him, am I a good Catholic or a bad Catholic? It's just, it's just something else that's made up, part of the whole thing. And on this trip, uh, this is a, a, a previous trip, but overall on the Europe trip, the worst he's ever been, according to uh, reports in the UK Sun. And uh, we don't need those reports. I mean, we see it right in front of our face. It's, it's awful. And I have to go back to the D-Day celebration for a moment. You saw it, and it was great, those those guys, but look at Joe even touching these men inappropriately. What's up with the little punch to the face? These heroes who stormed the beach at Normandy are getting a play tap or a touch on the cheek from Joe Biden. These are not children. Then it got me thinking about Joe and how he's kind of exploiting these guys and, and Democrats exploit them and undermine them at the same time. Take a look at uh, this line of veterans and they're just amazing people. 
um, hundred years old, some of them, and you can tell they've, uh, they've seen it all and they don't have, unfortunately, all that much time left. But one particular veteran stood out for me. He's the second in line here. And I wanna show you his cap. It says the 71st Infantry Division. Okay, and that's beautiful. And where is the 71st Infantry Division back in World War II? Where was it based? A place called Fort Benning, Georgia. That's where they did some of their critical training to get ready for D-Day and beyond. What is Fort Benning called now? It's no longer Fort Benning. Uh, it's something else. It's for some guy named Moore. I don't know who Moore is or was, and, but the base is different, the culture is different, and I don't think that fine gentleman there would recognize it. Everything is different, everything is woke, everything is strange, and that was unmentioned last week. The beautiful traditions that made our success at Normandy possible are being undermined across the board. Um, these men, what they went through for us. And the country undoubtedly was worth saving back then. It still is, but it was so important. And they came from bases all over the country, uh, 100,000 soldiers or so in the Armada, the great Armada that left from, I believe, England and, and from the United States. Look at the bases that they emerged from, some of them. These soldiers came from Fort Pickett, Fort Rucker, Fort Bragg, Fort Gordon. The veterans would not recognize these bases today. They couldn't. They couldn't even find them. <laughs> Fort Barfoot, Fort Novacell, Fort Liberty, Fort Eisenhower. They're familiar with Eisenhower, but where the hell's that fort? Nobody knows. And these classic military facilities, what are they called now? Uh, this. I don't know what this is all about. I don't know. I almost don't even care to learn. Sorry, but history is about a link between the present and the past. And those amazing warriors from World War II on the march in Europe, they literally could not find where these bases are today. And that is a disservice to them, it's a disservice to us, and it's a disservice to America, don't you think? You know, is the country worth fighting for? Yeah, but take a look at this, it's very thought-provoking. I was once willing to give my life for what I believed this country stood for. Today, I would give my life to protect my family from what this country has become. Something to think about. Next, please. All right, that uh, woman and child, very pretty, very cute kid. That's actually London Roberts and her daughter, Navy. Does that ring a bell? Hunter Biden had a relationship with her, and that is Hunter Biden's child, and she wrote a book about it just in time for the campaign. It's coming out uh, in August, I believe. Out of the Shadows, My Life Inside the Wild World of Hunter Biden. And, uh, well, she's getting ready for a book tour. A uh, little warm-up with Piers Morgan. What are your memories from that first encounter? How meeting him, how charming he was, um, how intelligent I felt that he was, even though he, he had a demon on his back. He was obviously suffering with addiction during that time. And, um, but I mean, he, he had my attention. He, he, I was intrigued by him. And um, that, that encounter was, he, not the encounter you would think by all the news tabloids and everything that mm -hmm. they have to say about Hunter. Um, actually meeting him is, is something different. Yeah, no, actually it's not, <laughs> even according to her own book. Look, she was totally screwed over by the Bidens, totally. Uh, but I have a little less sympathy for her uh, now that we're seeing excerpts from her book because when she met Hunter Biden, he was doing drugs in his underwear, uh, underwear with parrots on it, yep. Uh, the first time she saw him was in an office at an office party, but he was in his own private office and sitting at a table with all kinds of drug paraphernalia, a little bit like this. And he was meticulously going through his paraphernalia and pre uh, preparing his drugs. And uh, she thought, hmm, uh, 
he's so handsome. I want to get to know him better. And they become something of a casual couple. She starts bringing her friends around to meet this drug addict. Uh, yeah, I'm a lot less impressed with her than I used to be. Um, but Hunter Biden, he's the same crummy guy we've known all along. He gets her pregnant. First, he denies it's his, right? He fights it every step of the way. Not my kid, not my kid, not my kid. They say, you got to take a paternity test. He doesn't want to. He finally takes it because the court orders him to. It confirms that he is the baby, uh, the baby's father. Then he's got to pay child support. And then he goes to the court saying, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And it goes on like this, uh, denying Joe Biden himself continuing at one point to deny the grandchild even existed. Ah, really sad, right? A presidential family, not even after the paternity test. We know Hunter's a degenerate. Joe, not a good guy either. But you got the power of the presidency. Can't you show a little generosity to a two-year-old kid? The New York Times had to get involved. Last summer, they badgered Joe Biden into you got to admit that you have another kid here, another grandkid. Maureen Dowd writes a story. She quotes her sister saying, what I find unconscionable is that you refuse to admit or accept the fact that there is a beautiful little four-year-old girl living in Arkansas by the name of Navy Joan, who is your seventh grandchild. That's July 8th, 2023. He's known about the kid for at least four years. The New York Times is ignored by the mainstream media. Once the New York Times gets involved, Watch what happens. A couple of days later, Joe caves in, acknowledges that the kid is his. Can I see the date there, please? July 28th, 2023. Joe says this is not a political issue. It's a family matter. Jill and I only want what is best for all our grandchildren, including Navy. Okay, that's great, right? He finally did the right thing. Had to be badgered into it by the New York Times, but he did the right thing, right? No, he didn't actually. Have you ever heard from either President Biden or the First Lady directly? No. Not a no, phone call not. or a letter or anything? No. Isn't that amazing? So last July, he publicly acknowledges to the world that he has a grandchild and uh, they don't talk to her and they've never been in the same room as the grandchild, neither as Hunter. The Biden family, they've got power. He's the president of the United States. He's got his own helicopter. He's got his own jet. If he can't fly down to Arkansas, fly the baby up to Washington, D.C. Don't you want to hold her? Don't you want to kiss her? Here's the thing. Just about every guy I know would do the right thing, right? <laughs> you gotta. It's non-negotiable. If you're a halfway decent person, if you're not depraved, these people are depraved. They are totally and completely depraved. And here's, wow, Joe got asked about this. This is back when he was in denial about the whole matter. Look at the look on his face. He's being asked about the, the other grandchild. Watch what happens. Hey, with the I'm wondering if you have a comment on this report and court filing out of Arkansas that your son, Hunter, just made you a grandfather again? No, that's a private matter. I have no comment. Mr. President, thank you. But only you would ask that. You're a good man. You're a good man. Thank you, guys. This is all Classy. the time we have. He's giving the guy a hard time. Classy, sarcastic, because you're asking me about a grandchild that I have. You're a good man. Sarcastically, he says that, because you're asking me about a grandchild that is mine, but I refuse to acknowledge. Joe, you're not a good man, and you're not classy. And you, that was the whole myth about you. Good man, right? Norms, decent man. What a crock that was, huh? And still, a huge chunk of the media defending you and believing in this fake myth. When we see these pictures of Hunter Biden now, after the conviction, going around hugging everybody. Cheering them up. Cheering them up. Being the one to say it's going to be okay. H hugging his father in an embrace that is, 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 so, is, is so moving. Um, the voters who are going to decide this can see into the eyes of these people. They can see them together. They can see the love. Can you see the love? Is that love? No. 
That says a couple of guys who try to find a way, scheme out of accepting responsibility for a young child in Arkansas.